Hello, everyone. Welcome to Are Your Microservices Truly Scalable? A framework for unlocking the stateful backend. My name is Matthew Penarosa. I am a principal solutions engineer at uh, PingCap and TidyB. A um, little bit about me, I'm uh, based in Austin, Texas. I was originally born in uh, Eva Beach, Hawaii. And it's my job at TidyB to solution uh, technical challenges at scale for some of, of our company's largest customers. And a fun fact about me is uh, I used to be a former streamer and competitive Dota 2 player. All right, so jumping right in, um, the key focus of this session is to discuss scaling stateful backends in microservices with a focus on the challenges that arise in data systems as you scale. And why this matters is that application, as applications scale, backend components, particularly data backend components, often struggle to keep up affecting the uh, agility and performance and data integrity of the greater application. So what you'll learn today is the impact of scaling on data systems, challenges of maintaining data reliability as performance uh, and performance as system grows, and a framework for scaling your stateful layer uh, to avoid pitfalls as you scale. So everyone's probably very familiar with this architecture. You know, you, you, have, uh, you have an API gateway, you have your microservices, and behind these microservices, potentially you, can ha you might have uh, multiple databases per microservice or uh, a few shared databases uh, per microservices. Now, if you want to scale out your stateless microservices, it's fairly straightforward. Um, I'm sure there's app some application developers who be like, no, oh, it's not so straightforward. But relative to scaling the data side of things, it actually is relatively straightforward. You know, you increase the, the size of your instances, uh, your micro increase the vert vertically scale your microservices, you can horizontally scale your microservices, and don't have to worry too much about uh, data integrity. But how do you scale your data layer? So there's various options for this. Number one, you can go with the old school option, which is sharding, you know, dividing up uh, uh, the, uh, your database into small pieces, uh, into different, in different instances and having them shared. Um, then you, you could take the NoSQL route, which was the original uh, solution to the, the sharding problem. Um, and that, that could potentially be a key value store, a column family store, a graph store, a document store. Or you can do primary secondary replication, um, or even uh, going full regalia and doing a re complete read-write uh, separation to, to scale further than that. But this is what you don't want your data layer to, to look like behind your microservice. When you're combining all of these different solutions, you have your microservice and it's going into hundreds of different instances. Uh, over here is MySQL, this could be, this could be any database. Um, or you have different reads and writes going to different databases and your writes going, and all of these in different instances are all managed independently, not as a single entity. So this is what, what you really don't want uh, to see. So, Categories of databases to consider um, as a backend for a microservice. You know, uh, there are three major categories of databases. First of all, you have your relational databases, uh, which you know you'll probably be very familiar with. Your Postgres, your MySQL, and the key traits of these databases is they maintain ACID, uh, the, the full ACID transactions. Uh, they support full SQL syntax. Um, they support uh, data integrity, but as you scale, the big pro problem is, is that you're gonna run into that operational complexity that I showed you on that previous slide. And then you have your NoSQL databases, which were created to solve the problems, uh, particularly the scalability problems of these relational databases. And with these databases like HBase and, and Cassandra and, and Mongo, um, you get the higher scalability, you get the flexible schemas, you get higher reliability, um, but you get limited query capability and you get limited uh, schema enforcement. Um, and that's where this third category of databases comes in, which would be distributed SQL. And so over here I have TidyB, you know, it's a company I work for, uh, but there's also in this category you'd have your Spanner, you have, you have your Cockroach, and you have your Yugabyte. And this new category of database uh, essentially combines a lot of the traits between relational databases and NoSQL databases, uh, giving you the scalability and reliability of NoSQL with a similar, uh, with a similar functionality um, of your relational databases, including your ACID transaction support, your full SQL support, as well as guaranteed data integrity. So here's an alternative 
way of structuring your microservices, where you have a, it is a giant system, or you have a, uh, your internal systems where all these different microservices that are all going to a single source of truth um, that can provide um, a source of, of data for, for your individual microservices. Now, when it comes to selecting a database, scalability is king. Scalability is, the fle is, is flexibility. It is the flexibility to expand your application, to make changes to your application. Um, if, your data, if you're at, you know, have 500 terabytes of data and you can't make any changes to it, that's really not a tenable, scalable solution. Uh, solution. Same thing with performance. You know, if you cannot maintain a consistent performance, if you cannot adapt to uh, varying conditions, also get, once again, not a scalable system. If your system is not reliable, if it cannot um, uh, scale out or respond to a failure in, let's say, an in, in, uh, availability zone, that's also gonna be, uh, be downstream of scalability. And finally, um, operability. If um, all it takes is 1,000 engineers to scale your system, that's uh, a fundamentally non-scalable system. What you don't want to see, and I do see this at some companies, this is their solution to scaling out their, their data systems, is the amount of engineers to, required to manage the database um, go up linearly as you scale. And that's not something that I think uh, anyone wants. So the fundamental principle of scalability is the ability to expand from zero to many without any design changes. This is a, an, a, um, a pretty close to an ideal state. But the North Star of scalability, whether this is possible or not, this is what we want to be striving for, should be that any scaling event uh, would sacrifice only one thing, cost. So if you go from one to a thousand or one to a million, the only thing that you're paying for is, is cost without actually having to maintain uh, or make any application changes. Now, is this realistic right now? Maybe, we'll see. Uh, but this is what we should actually be shooting for when we are uh, constructing our, our systems. So why is this so difficult, right? As you add uh, more users, you add more tenants, uh, you build new features, um, there's more, and you, have, you add another data pipeline to your application, you collect more data. Uh, as you expand and as you grow and you scale up, um, that causes a cascading uh, ch uh, uh, amount of challenges that, that need to be dealt with. Number one, you need more connections. You need more, more, more connections, you need more requests, uh, which results in more metadata to manage. Um, there'll be more data stored, uh, which means more data to scan, more data to process, more data to reorganize, more data to move. It means there's more challenges on your CDC and your streaming pipelines. Um, everything is down, the complications are, are go heavily downstream um, as you scale up. So, without a truly scaling database, um, your durations are gonna be going up, uh, or might be going up exponentially um, as you, as you uh, add more, more nodes and shards. What you wanna be looking for is that the duration of your operations should be as close to flat as possible. While and, excuse me. Um, and then when, you when you're dealing with scale, you want to make sure as you're expanding out nodes and shards that, you're actually, that that system can actually just go up linearly with the uh, increases in throughput as well as increases in data size without having to continuously add more and more and more shards uh, to handle less and less scale. So the North, this is a description of North Star of, or the scalability. Uh, so these are the kind of things that we want to be looking for when we're analyzing our databases for uh, uh, large-scale applications. Number one, we want our query latency, our add index duration, we want disaster recovery time, shard failover time. We don't want these to be dependent upon our degree of scale, the amount of nodes, the amount of shards in our system. And we want our throughput and our tendency to be the scale as linear as possible. So some of the key dimensions of scalability that we need to be looking at when we're making these decisions is number one, we wanna be looking at throughput, data, data volume in and out. See if, we can, if, uh, 
your database system and your data layers can handle this. Write latency, read latency, uh, DDL dur dur duration, which is, uh, I think, often overlooked, but is, is extremely important at scale because there's a lot of companies that run into these situations where, um, yeah, their throughput's fine, their read latency is, uh, is fine, their write latency is fine, but when they wanna make a change to their application or a change to their schema, that is all of a sudden a two-month operation. Um, backup and restore speed, uh, import speed, change feed throughput. So, this is a graph comparing uh, scalability. I would have liked to put a lot more databases onto this, but um, unfortunately having a dozen databases on a little graph like this is not very readable. So I chose three, three popular ones. Uh, here we have TidyB, Cockroach, and Aurora. So this, this graph describes how close each one of these databases is to the North Star of scalability that we just talked about. So we have Aurora here, which you're pro probably very familiar with, and what Aurora's um, uh, strengths are going to be are going to be focused on you know the number of number of objects that it can handle its tenancy its its data lo lo loading uh, the tooling around it uh, as well as the stability of latency which comes from it uh, inherently being a single writer um, excuse me a, a single writer uh, data store and then you have your cockroach uh, DB which is of course going to be very strong in the global distri distribution. Uh, side of things, as well as the shard failover time. It's going to be very, very stable, um, as well as data loading. And it's going to be generally pretty good at, at a, a quite a few things. And we have TidyB over here, which is really going to shine in the uh, request da and data throughput, as well as the number of different workloads it can handle, and as well as generally be very strong kind of around the edge, particularly in its ability to perform DDL uh, at scale. Literally. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how TidyB scales. So TidyB's architecture is built from the ground up to scale. Number one, it has a distributed storage layer, which we, uh, which we call um, our TyKV nodes. And these TyKV nodes uh, perform auto uh, and transparent uh, data sharding. And what's great about it is they can all be scaled out, uh, scaled out linearly or horizontally to achieve a, a linear growth in, in, in scale. Um, we also have a, a, a stateless uh, SQL layer, which we call our TidyB nodes. And this layer is re responsible for uh, SQL processing as well as distributed computing. And what's great about uh, the separation here of your storage and compute is that you can scale out uh, each linearly as you need them, or horizontally as you need them. And we have our cluster management uh, PD nodes, which uh, handle data placement, data safety, and workload balance. Uh, they also manage the, the metadata of the cluster. And this entire system is built for scalability and high availability with every single node having a failover node ready in case of a outage. And it's also auto-healing, which makes uh, operating the system at scale uh, very, very convenient. So how is the data actually mapped around and scaled out? So the SQL data is mapped to uh, key value data. And this key value data is split into small chunks, which are 96 megabytes by default. And what we can do with these individual chunks is we can place them across different TyKV nodes. And right now we have four, but this could be hundreds of different TyKV nodes. And you can take these little pieces of data and spread them out evenly as to not uh, overtax any individual uh, instance. And the way ACID is maintained with these replicas is we, uh, you, we use the RAC consensus protocol to uh, essentially have a voting system for the different replicas to vote on what uh, um, uh, version of the data is correct. And distributed computing and query execution. So in order to be able to perform queries uh, at scale across large systems, we need to make sure we're utilizing all of the, the power of our systems. So we talked about the separation of compute and storage. And uh, distributed computing and query execution allows um, the, uh, TIDB, or the TIDB cluster to divide up processes among the storage nodes. So for example, over here we have a count, uh, um, we have a, we have a account here, 
and we can divide up the count process among the individual Thai KB nodes who will execute a portion of the uh, query plan and then bring it uh, back towards the TidyB node for a final uh, uh, aggregation. And scaling out with TidyB is also very easy because if you need more throughput, you need more storage, all you have to do is add a node rather than engage in any complex uh, sharding logic. Okay, and this is a um, example of actually like um, how TidyB actually performs when you're, scaling, when you're scaling. So this is a, a test that LinkedIn performed where they did a, uh, a two million read operations on 30 plus uh, TIKB nodes. And as you can see, to, uh, with, Tidy, the, with TIDB's performance here, it's pretty close to that linear scalability that we're, we're looking for. And this is also another test from another, one of our uh, customers is Flipkart, and they were able to uh, to uh, get up to a million QPS on TidyB with uh, 4.82 uh, milliseconds, P95, uh, for read operations and 123,000 write operations per second at 6.1 milliseconds, uh, P95. And another added benefit, actually, is the, the way we store the data. Uh, because of, uh, we, we use B-trees to store the data, which actually results in typically around an 80% decrease in your data footprint as compared to MySQL, requiring, which means you, required, uh, you require much, much less um, uh, storage as you scale up. Great. And with that, thank you. Any questions? Thank you.